Victor's Assembly Church is located along River Road at former Casino Cinema near Kenya Uniform Distributors. To give you offering, send through our Mpesa number 0722 712 918. Luke 17, give me from verse 11. Give me from verse 11. We all read the word of God together, then we take our seat. Let's all read together. Now it happened, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. There met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Give us the next verse until I tell you to stop. Verse 14. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourself to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Note that as they they were cleansed. Verse 16. As verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, Returned and with a loud voice glorified. You shall be the one of them. Amen. You shall be the one of them. Amen. You shall be the one of them. Amen. Lift up your hands and tell God, let me be the one that will come back here. Glorifying you because of a testimony. Let me be the one, Lord. Let me be the one. Let me be the one to come back and glorify you. Let me be the one, oh God. Let me be the one. Let me be the one. Let me be the one this morning. That will come back and glorify you for what you have done. There are many that will be cleansed, but let me be the one. Let me be the one, oh God. Let me be the one. Let me be the one that will come and glorify you. Give you all the praise. Father God, as I share your word right now, I pray that your word will have an entry point in our lives, oh God. Receive all the glory and receive all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody shout amen. amen. This is where now amen applies. Can I get a better amen? amen. Can I hear amen? amen? You may have your seat in a season of glorifying God all together. So the title of my sermon is Mercy That Breaks Protocol. Mercy That Breaks Protocol. Can I hear somebody say that after me? Mercy That Breaks Protocol. Tell your neighbor, there is mercy available today that will break all protocols in the name of Jesus. So, um, I wanted to define mercy from the Greek word. Mercy is shanan, which is C-A-H-A-N-N-A-N, shanan. So, when we talk about shanan, it means that it is somebody that stoops low to show kindness to an inferior. To an inferior. It means that there's somebody that is of high standing that for some time looks down, does not consider their position but lower themselves to extend kindness to somebody who does not deserve it. So in actual sense, mercy is a gift that is given to somebody that is not qualified. And I wanted to understand that mercy is a weighty matter to God. It is a weighty matter to God. If you read the Bible in Hebrews chapter 4, from verse 14 to 16, let's read there. Hebrews 4, from verse 14 to 16. Seeing that then we have a high, great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold our confession. Verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize. Sympathize is another word for mercy. Compassion is another word for Mercy. So it would read, for we do not have a high priest who cannot have mercy with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's read that scripture together. One to go. Let us therefore to the throne of God, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. That tells you that mercy is a gift. You obtain a gift. And then grace in itself, grace is a mystery. 
So when you obtain mercy, then grace is accessible. And I know most of you that are seated here. If you are born again or whether you are not born again, you are all seated here because we have been shown mercy. And that's why Jesus had to suffer like he suffered. Because in the same sufferings, he was able to get compassion out of it. He was able to have a feeling of how we feel when we are tempted. And because he was God, he did not sin. And that's why when you go before him as a human being and you sin. Because he knows your inadequacies. He understands that the privileges he had to be God, you don't have it. That is why every time we approach him, the Bible says we obtain number one mercy. Because mercy removes judgment. I was reading and seeing the throne of God. That the throne of God has justice on one side. And righteousness on the other side. And out of the face of God, mercy and truth is what illuminates. So it means that in the throne of God, that is, if, you, if you've done the study on the Ark of the Covenant, there are two cherubs that guard the mercy seat. The cherubims, they are the highest, uh, you know, hierarchy of angels. So they guard the mercy seat. The foundation of the mercy seat is number one, righteousness. Righteousness means right standing before God. And on the other side is justice. So it means the foundation of that mercy seat is to make sure that everybody is given, is paid according to what they are due. So in case you have fallen short of the glory of God, the wages of sin is death. So when you appear him, before him, instead of God seeing his righteousness, he sees death in you. So what happens is that he will not hear you. And what illuminates from the face of God when you approach his throne? The Bible is saying that it is truth and mercy. That is what comes out of him. That when God is looking at you, he will either stand for the truth and judge you according to the truth. Or he will lean towards the, towards the side of mercy. I pray that every time God will look at us, mercy is what he will, he will see. Lift your voice and say, Jesus, have mercy on me. I can't hear you. Somebody say, Jesus, have mercy on me. That is in Psalm 89 and verse 14. Psalm 89 and verse 14. Let's all read it together so that it makes sense. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. So when you go before God, that's what the Bible says, let us come boldly into the presence, to the throne of mercy, that we may obtain mercy and grace to keep us in the time of need. So every time when you appear before God, God is either going to look at you with the eye of justice or look at you with the eye of righteousness. When you are born again, the righteousness of Christ is in you. So you already get a free pass. Can we celebrate Jesus for setting us free? Can we celebrate the righteousness of Christ? Then, when you appear before him in righteousness, what comes out of his face is mercy. Because when he sees righteousness, his heart is softened, compassion. Because he's looking at you, in spite of the many temptations that you have been through, in spite of the many trials that you are encountering every day, you still have managed to keep your walk with God. When he looks at you, he says, Oh, anajari busana. So what comes of, out of his face will be mercy. But when in his this same throne, the justice side of God is meant to reward everybody according to what they have done. That is why the justice side of God is what the sinners know. And the religious folk. Wale watu wanapena mambo ya dini. Ni wale watu anaangalia kulingana na maandiko. Kama umevanya usherati uliwe leo hivi sasa. Those are the people that lean towards the justice side of God. And it is okay. But I prefer the mercy side. Because even when I fall, I have a high priest that is compassionate. That is the God we want to embrace. We don't want the God that we are always afraid will make a mistake and he will kill us. That does not mean he's not a consuming fire. But there is a better way. It depends on which side you want to lean on. You sinned, it's a truth. But when you appear at the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy, it means instead of you being judged for what you did, Jesus steps in and says, no, I have shown them mercy. I pray that this day we will obtain his mercy. So I'm talking about the mercy that breaks protocol. So there is another dimension 
of mercy. And now we've talked about the throne of mercy. We've talked about the throne of mercy. It is important you understand that. That in the breaking of protocol in mercy, approaching the throne of God is important. But there is also now the dimension of acts of mercy. Acts of mercy. When Jesus was speaking the Beatitudes, we all know about the Beatitudes. About uh, Matthew 5, 7, that whoever will show mercy, they will be shown mercy. Acts of mercy. Acts of mercy. Blessed are they, merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. There is a throne room of mercy, but there is also what you do to activate mercy. And one of the things that Jesus has said is that blessed are those that are merciful. Wame barikiwa wale wanahurumia wengine. Amia jirani yako, zoea kunihurumia. Oh, let me tell you, if the world was full of compassionate people, the world would be a better place. Kama kuna mtu hapa ameumia, ameumia kwa sababu waliumizwa, na mtu ambaye alidil na ye, pila mikono ya huruma. Am I talking to people here? If there is a heart, kama kuna mtu ameshtuliwa na maisha, or somebody that is worried and afraid of life, it is because there is somebody that handled them without mercy. And I'm talking about not mercy after you sin. It is mercy when you are vulnerable. Eh -eh. That's why the Bible says that he's a father to the fatherless. He's a husband to the widow. Why? Because anytime you become vulnerable, you enter into the mercy protectorate of God. He is near to those who are broken hearted. God will never find you broken hearted and break your heart father. When God finds a broken hearted person, what does he do? He shows them mercy. He embraces them. He lifts them up. But that does not mean that being broken, that not every broken person deserves mercy. Sinikweli. Hmm? Shusha yona mtu wa muumizu wa nanije uri tu. Sinikweli. You have seen people who are, they are, they are going through a bad situation, but their attitude is wrong. But they are people. When they are broken, even when things are okay, they still have a broken heart. That is why a broken spirit, a contrite heart and a broken spirit, the Lord will not despise. That means there are people who appear before the throne of grace and God despises them. In fact, they have never seen his face. Because if you are not the kind of person that shows mercy, so our interactions with each other determine whether we will, God will break protocol for us. You cannot oppress the worker that works under you. You are looking for where to deduct their money. And expect you are a tither, you prosper. It's not possible. You can't expect that the house help in your home eats a special diet that is inferior to yours. And you expect in that house, angels will be ascending and descending. They will be avoiding your house. <laughs> you cannot be the kind of person that is legalistic with others. Mutu wa kianguka kwa dhambi unakuotu ma scripture. Na siyonge hii generation ya usinijaji, hiyo generation wachana nayo, hiyo ni ya wakora. Unapatikana, umefanya kitu siya kawaida, na unasema mina chakwambia na usinijaji, ambia jirani yako usinijaji. Hiyo, that is hypocrisy of the highest level. Kuna watu sikuizi wana nidisclosia mambo, aniambe usinijaji. If... <laughs> Ati reverend, si kukwambia niliogopa utanijaji. You have already judged yourself. Somebody that is broken is never afraid of what people will say. If you are broken, that's why the Bible says, <laughs> to the pure, all things are pure. But kuna wajeuli kanisa ni na inje. People that are not broken, na wanasema usini judge. Usini judge. Reverend Nikona sponsor na usini judge. At the Reverend, I have a relationship with a married man, na usini judge. Now, where do we draw the line? Wapendwa niambiani, where do we draw the line? Si lazima to draw the line. That's why on the throne of mercy there is judgment, there is, there is, there is truth, and there is mercy. The truth is that if you are a fornicator, eh? if you practice witchcraft, there is, there is a place called the hellfire where people like you will burn forever. It is the truth. And if I say it, I've not wronged. But if I want to restore you, hellfire is not what I will use to restore you. Because you are already judged. I don't need to judge you. 
it is mercy that will reconcile you. And that is why as a church, we are not a bunch of perfect people. You are not perfect. I am not perfect. But that does not give us a free pass to sin as we want. But we are conscious of his mercy by showing mercy to each other. Hallelujah in the house. How do you react when you hear your brother is in trouble? Do you say, Hallelujah, Jehovah has avenged me. Na vide alikuwa na nirigia na hiyo gali, aone vide ya meona. Ah, in your own time, you laughed, you are the only one. Ten people will laugh to your face. Because even when your brother is down, don't laugh that they are down. Because a time will come. Because life is turned by turn. Tell your neighbor, life is turned by turn. Yeah, just because you are up, it does not mean that you will never go down. And God allows us to be up and go down that we may learn how to show mercy. I, I don't know that you're hearing me. Even if you pray 24, 24 days and declare that I'm praying for 100 days, that evil will never come. The Bible says every day has its own trouble. There is none of us who is immune to trouble. None of us is immune to being broke. It is normal. Your business can be doing well and tomorrow is not doing okay. Even with all the prayer, your business can be, uh, fire can come and consume everything and you are spared. That does not mean you are less righteous than the righteous. But every time you go through something, God is giving people an opportunity to show mercy. Because God will show mercy in like the same quantity and quality that you show mercy to others. That's why I'm very careful when people fall, that I may restore them by showing them mercy. The only thing that God does not show mercy, no matter how you repent, is rebellion. If you rebel against his system, he has nothing else to offer but to hurl you down. But see everybody, David slept with Uriah's wife. Oh, so many things that have happened, but God restored them. Why? Because anything that does not affect the way the system runs can be shown mercy. That's like if you decide today you want to sponsor a, a, a coup or bring open rebellion in the church, no mercy will be shown. Because rebellion negates the law of mercy. It now activates the law of justice. That's like if you murder a person. We want to show you mercy, but a soul went down. So what will happen? Kamete for life, but we'll be visiting you and sending you pillow ones in a while. But still you have been shown mercy because according to the word of God, you should have died. Eh? Ideally, the Bible says that it is an eye for an eye. If you shed somebody's blood, the Bible's prescription, at a way, will be hapo hapo. But for a murderer to be given life imprisonment, it is mercy. It is mercy because they should have died. They should have died. But there is no remedy for rebellion. Anytime rebellion appears, mercy is withdrawn. Because rebellion is negating the law of justice. When you, when you overlook, at least when you, are, when you are a sinner, righteousness can speak for you. But the minute you break justice, let me tell you, you'll be crushed like Satan. That is why it is important to show mercy. When a brother or a sister falls in our midst, before you are the first one to cast the stone, look inward. It is only that you are not discovered. Hey, hey. Look at your neighbor and say nothing. Tell them, if you are the most righteous, throw the first stone. Tupamawe ya kwanza. Nikweli. Ni vile tu wewe you are a smart sinner. <laughs> Do you know you have smart sinners? People who know how to destroy evidence. Mtu anafanya dhambi na bado sande rika ta hasataria hira. Hira. Na alifanya usharati jana usiku. Ask me I know. Oh, as a pastor what have I seen? Unaambi unasema guy. Oh. It's only that one girl that is innocent fell once and she got pregnant because she is not a sinner at heart. Even those who get pregnant are even more innocent. Because it tells you they don't know. criminals. They are four times mothers. But they are still like saying, oh, my friend, Even when you preach this sermon about sin, they'll be saying, Amen, Reverend. Amen, Reverend. Because they've seen to a place where they are immune. Anybody who is always quick to judge others, they are hiding something. Now, if you have ever fallen and known how mercy can restore you, you can never deny your brother mercy. 
Oi, siju kama tunaelewana. Because we are not a company of angels. We are human. We fall. But that does not give us permission to sin at will. Because any time you repeat a mistake you are rebuked from, mercy cannot work for you. So habitual sinners. Wale anasema mimi nita nimefanya dhabi. Demwe yona wanyona. Hidewi tuwai. Kumago shiaru. Even if you emotionalize. If this is the second time you are committing, mercy will not be available. Because he who is rebuked and repeats a mistake, mercy must be withdrawn. Are we communicating? Because if you didn't learn the first one by mercy, then experience, God allows you to go through through cycle. Ndiyo uelewe ni kifanya hivyo, kuna endaga hii, hau ndiyo wale watu wanaimbaga. Uka hithi odhiyo waku kai. Ukisikia mejificha uso, jua mercy has been withdrawn. Mungu hana tabia hide and seek. Ati kuma. Do you think God has kuma? He does not do that. It's only kids who do that. God is a father. He does not hide. Ati sana anza game na wewe. Mamoyo. Lia lia. And then I say mama. Mimi ndiya mungu wako niko na wewe. He does not do that. Anytime you find the heavens are closed, mercy has been withdrawn. So if you are a smart intercessor, you go back. Jehovah, show me mercy. Show me. Because sometimes the things that make God withdraw mercy, we do not know. Because God does not look outwardly. He looks at the heart. There are many times that you would even be serving God and your heart is wrong. There are people who are born again today. If there was no hell, they would not be born again. Situnge tu kweli. If there was no hell, hakuna jehanamu. Na bingu inaenu, hawangekua nafanya. Angekua normal sinners. Because the only thing they fear, if they die now, where will they go? There are people here who will not tithe. If they knew, they are no devourers. That is where amen now comes in. Kunawatu sahi, they would be fornicating right and left if they knew there was no HIV. It's true. Or if they knew they will not get pregnant or they will not get caught, they will be fornicating their night. Because it is no longer an attitude, it's not a thing from the heart. It is a physical exercise. As long as they appear clean, they appear right. The things that are done in darkness, they have a way of being exposed when light comes. So leave those secret sins that you've been doing under the table. Because one day, Satan is not a good friend. Satan cannot keep secrets. You remember even when he appeared in a meeting, he was not invited between Job and God. And he said, I have come because of this one. Why have you protected him the way you do? Satan will not do anything in secret. I pray that you will pursue the mercy of God. Show mercy to the needy around you. But I have realized that most of us show mercy to everybody else. Minus our own. Minus? If your child does not perform the way you want, would you still show them mercy? No, it's easier said than done. It's easier said. Mtoto wako akifanya vile ulimfundisha na afanye vibaya. I've done gorgeous woman many times. And one of the key things I'm realizing that most of these girls are not wounded because the men left them. They are wounded because when they came home, the parents did not show mercy. In fact, if you interview all these people on the streets here, majority of them began at home. Because we, most people have a reputation out there. Watu wanasema, guy, manafrahingi mama yenu vile yako. Watoto wanasema, nani? Uyo ni Hitler. Uyo ni hi? Because sometimes it's easy to be superficial. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Guy. Jehovah, give me grace. My father, my... I'm talking the truth. The, how do you react when they don't perform in good grades? How? How? Do you show mercy? Do you imagine when a student feels how they feel? Huh? So you know how they feel. So you know, nani yanguka mtihani hapa, me included. 
or there is students who don't lift their hands. Hata kama ni class 1. How does it feel? You already feel judged. Me I used to hide my report card for a whole term and say itatumwa kwa mail and because I knew there was only one box your box and they would give to whoever they like I knew I would get away with it until in December when my father decided <laughs> Jova I'm repenting officially <laughs> You know why I hid because I was not sure how I would be received Every parent here can your child trust you if they fail If things go the way they didn't like would you be the first option or they would rather go to grandmother go to auntie go to pastor because you are an animal how do we deal with people when they fail it goes now down to the basics how do you deal with yourself when you fail you cannot give what you don't have hallelujah in the house many of us here are wounded trying to look for mercy God has already shown mercy to you but the problem is you're still beating yourself beating yourself you everybody else can show you mercy but you have no mercy on yourself over yourself the way you torment yourself any parent here that has had their daughter bring a kid home and they embrace them na kuvulia kofia it takes courage it takes Any one of you that has a drunkard at home and you still call them my son na kuvulia kofia because it takes mercy to keep such a rebel in the home lift your hands and tell god thank you for your mercy upon me thank you lord appreciate god for his mercy 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 as a mother you need mercy shata bahan dere bohostaka I'm the one you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy oh I'm the one you have shown me mercy riada na na bahasari ada babande Just tell God for all the times you have shown me mercy I say thank you For all the times you have shown me mercy I thank you Lord For all the times you have shown me mercy thank you Lord Shalala It is by the mercies of God that we are not consumed It is by the mercies of God we are still standing. Radio Satoya Ramahane. We are the Ramaha Shariaba. Sio kwa maana ulimtafuta ni yeye alikutafuta. Sio kwamba wewe ni mtanja sana ni yeye alikutafuta. Just take a minute and appreciate his mercy. Reba na Ramaha Shariaba baba. Rebecca Handebaha Thank you Jesus Thank you Lord It's interesting to see how when we are broke we share everything It's interesting When you don't have money I know all of us have had that grouping where you are in the same school or you are starting work at the same time you would share everything Have you seen that Where somebody tells you I don't have food, do you understand? You give them food. But after you God blessed, we begin to call people beggars. And it's something that I was looking at it and I said sometimes deception is easier to get than the truth. Haven't you seen these politicians when they are with us? They are very compassionate. But when they get there, Mercy is taken away. Most of us are like the five, the 10 lepers, the 9 lepers. 
nine were healed, ten were healed, but only one came back to glorify God. Any time God does something for you and you fail to glorify him, you deny yourself mercy. So for you to enjoy the protocols of mercy, you must be conscious that what you have, what you are, you did not earn it. I said you did not earn it. The prayers we pray don't earn us a position to be men of God. The money we give does not qualify us to prosper. It is God who shows compassion to whoever he wants to show compassion to. Nobody has made an application to God. Show me mercy. The people you think are facing the consequences of their sin, you have done worse. But his mercy covered you. When we live in the consciousness of his mercy, there will never be a day we will be arrogant. The greatest mistake that the children of Israel did was to forget about his mercy. He drew them out of the wild, out of Egypt and they went into the wilderness. By the time they were in the wilderness, arrogance became the order of the day. We are tired of this manner. We are tired of the way God is treating us. We are tired of hearing from Moses. And then God looked at them. They started murmuring, oh, that we would have been in Egypt. Oh, because a man that is void of the mercy of God is arrogant. Arrogant. And they act like they were not helped. They despise the help that was given to them. And I believe even if you're not guilty, I've been guilty many times where I forget where he has brought me from. And it is easy. It is easy. But when you're conscious that it is mercy that is making you stand, it is not that you know too much Bible. It is not that you know how to pray. It is not that you know how to, to collect, the, you know, to, 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 to design the right church to go to. It is not because you know how to choose relationships. That's why you got the right one. There is a power of his mercy that has been going behind you and has been causing your lines to fall on place and places. Church, I think we need to embrace his mercy in a different way. Because the only place we are told to come boldly is before the throne of mercy that we may obtain grace and mercy. Is anybody in need here? Let us approach his throne of mercy. And the only way to do that is understanding that even what you think you don't have, the little you have is because he has shown you mercy. I want you to take a minute and tell God, for all the times I have ignored your mercy, for all the times I've taken your mercy for granted, I am guilty, Lord. I am guilty, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me. Let us go boldly before his throne and tell him, Lord, forgive me. For all the times I've not treated people well. For all the times I've not treated myself well. For all the times I've not honored you. Yet I'm a recipient of your mercy, Lord. I come boldly that I may obtain mercy. I'm sorry. Surrender behind the devotion. Lord, have your way. 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 Jesus, we come boldly to your throne of mercy. That we may obtain 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 mercy. In Jesus' name do we pray. Matthew 23, 23. Jesus talking to the Pharisees. He says, woe unto you, the Pharisees, the scribes, the hypocrites. For you pay tithe of mint and are nice and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. Justice and mercy and faith. 
this you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Mercy is a weighty matter. I can use the word of God to oppress or I can use the word of God to liberate. My desire and my prayer every day is that we will live to our name that will be a house of liberation. That is why many times you have seen even one false. I incorporate them into the body with ease because I am also a recipient of mercy. And the measurement you use on others is the same one that we used on you. The former Pentecostal church is like if you are a member of the full gospel church or the Tukutendereza movement in the Presbyterian, if you fail, they would excommunicate you openly and they make sure nobody talks to you. But the New Testament is not like that. When somebody falls with the spirit of love, yet with caution, let us embrace them. We are not embracing the sin. We are crying that the soul shall be saved. If some of us were handled better, when we fail, we would have loved God more. But I've seen people, when they fail, they were mishandled. I've seen people here coming to me, Reverend, I did something and I'm afraid. I don't know how you receive me. And I tell them, I am not God. I am human like you. If I don't receive you, in my own day, when I will fall short, I will not receive mercy. If you want to be a constant receiver of mercy, stop dealing with people hardly. I... Stop tackling people like you want to kill them. Stop being rude to people. Because rudeness begets rudeness. Sometimes stop following the letter. Follow the spirit. There are people who use laws to intimidate people. But when you use the spirit of mercy, it means that even if somebody will suffer the consequences, they will remember that you made them feel better through the journey. They always say that people will never remember what you did to them. But they will always remember how you made them feel. Yes. I've sinned. Let me feel I am a sinner. But also let me experience the feeling of being forgiven. I pray that when people come to you, the love of Christ will overshadow you, will fill your heart. Because where there is love, there is no competition. Where there is love, there is no gossip. Where there is love, there is no mud sling. Where there is love, we accommodate more. And no wonder God brought us to a neighborhood that is the worst. You require love to live here. Because they shout out my name there, not looking like me. But if I want to pretend I am a Pharisee and a publican, I will say the anointed does not mingle with sinners. And that is a protocol that Jesus broke. Because the protocol of mercy is that there is no fear in association. There is no fear in love. Oh, if you are afraid, you need to encounter mercy. Because when you know mercy has visited you, you will never be afraid of what people will say. There is another dimension called the cry of mercy. We've talked about the throne, the acts of mercy, and the cry for mercy. This is a cry, an everyday cry for everybody who is here. It should be an everyday cry. Lord, show me mercy. Show me because the Bible says even the most righteous acts, every, even the, the most perfect singing that we think we sing is still but a few that are before him. Why? Because all flesh does not qualify before him. Mm, nothing. There is nothing you can do in this life unless grace and mercy through Jesus Christ is presented before the throne that is acceptable. Because even when you think you're the most righteous, you still don't meet the mark. That is why for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I have realized the more I approach his throne the more I dig deeper into him the more unqualified I realize I am. If you are in the habit of approaching the throne of God you can never be proud. You can never be arrogant. Because when you appear before him, you see yourself as he sees you. Oof. Every day you'll be crying, show me mercy. Show me mercy. If God was to give you an analysis of the last one hour, how you have missed the mark, you would never have the courage to go before him. Because he sees your thoughts, he sees your intention, he sees everything. The thoughts that have crossed over our minds in the last one hour, it will take his mercy. 
for us to go boldly before him. Therefore, none of us, none of us is beyond his mercy. That is why the blind Bartimaeus is one of the critical guys that you must know in the school of mercy. So when you enter into the throne room of mercy, that is where the motives of the heart are revealed. The blind Bartimaeus knew already me. I don't qualify. So he says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Because he knew I don't qualify to be healed. I don't qualify. Ooh. The reason why we get angry and bitter with God is because we think we qualify. But the minute you realize what you have is by his mercy. You will never stop the mercy cry. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It is not that you knew how to give birth right, that all your children are healthy. No, he has shown you mercy. It's not that the, the, what you wrote about your life, how you want to live it, and is exactly as you desired it. It's not like you know how to write better than others. It is only mercy. May the cry of mercy never be taken out from us. Church, it is time to live by the mercy of God. It is not that you are hardworking. That's why you are overtaking. And that is why prostitutes will make it in heaven before believers. Because the prostitute already in a place, they say, I don't qualify. Show me mercy. That is why the Samaritan woman did much more than Judas could do when he was around Jesus. Why? Because the Samaritan woman knew, I am not qualified. I am a Samaritan. I have nothing to do with the Jews. If only the Lord reveals to you who you are to him, you will never stop crying for mercy. Sometimes he will show you your inadequacies and show you what he has helped you to achieve. And you realize the race is not to the swift. It is the Lord that gives victory. Everybody of us needs to assess yourself correctly. Let nobody think of himself highly than he ought to be. This preaching is beyond English. This singing is beyond a good voice. It is mercy that makes you to sing the right song and have it accepted. It is mercy that makes you know how to choose the right colors and you look good. There is somebody else that was born with autism. It does not mean that your mother was more righteous than they are. We are all recipients of mercy. There are people that were born with mental illnesses. Yet their mothers and fathers knew about generational curses. And right now they are on antidepressants. That does not mean that you are more qualified than they are. Anytime you see a chokora there, before you see a chokora, see the Lord has shown me mercy. It could have been me. It could have been my baby. It could have been my brother. It could have been. And when you are conscious of the mercy, every day you will be going before him and tell him, Lord, show me mercy. Can we lift up our voice and cry for his mercy? Just for two minutes. Ooh. Could have been me. Could have been me. You feel like you want to go on your knees as far. Whatever way you need to access it. It could have been me. It could have been me. It could have been me. Could have been me on Sunday morning. Insulting people in the streets of River Road. On drugs. It could have been me. Thank you for showing me mercy. I cry for your mercy upon my life. I pray for your mercy upon my life. That your mercy will never depart from me. To your mercy, Lord. That you will never engage your truth. You know, the difference between David and Saul is a condition of their heart. Anytime you feel you qualify, then you lose your qualification. Lord, Lord, I'm the one that you have shown mercy. 
You are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. If I've angered you in any way, show me mercy. If I've been arrogant and complaining and murmuring before you, Lord, show me mercy. Show me mercy. Mother Nijigwira. Anukana eko idha dio wako mother Usificha uso wako kwangu Yesu Naomba Bwana Wepo wako uwe na mimi Yesu Macho yako usiyazime kwangu Mungu Masikio yako yawe yamefunguka kunisikiza Kaenda wewe oji kwake na tudashi yako Like a father Or a mother is compassionate with a born baby, a baby they born. Lord, I pray. Lord, I pray that as I deal with my family, let mercy. As I deal with your people, let my powers of mercy. Lord, let compassion guard my heart. The Bible says when Jesus looked at the multitude and he saw their hunger. It's easy to deal with people with arrogance especially when you have power especially when you have a position but I want to be the woman of God that mama na mahasha ni araba I'm crying for myself riba hande riba goshita ka it is easy to use money as an excuse not to show compassion It is easy to use your position as an excuse to lack compassion. Don't mind I have a many people. Nimesaidia wengi lakini they treated me not equal. Don't let your compassion be be quenched by people that don't appreciate. Because their own time will come. Sharmana na na na. Hiramandari ara vashandari aba. Jesus 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 I'm the one you have shown me much you have shown me much The world system does not like the mercy system. Out of experience I've seen that the people that have wounded me most are people that have shown mercy. Because mercy is a language of the spirit. It's not a language of the flesh. The flesh wants instant justice. But mercy says no. And I pray that mercy will be tied around our hearts as we deal with ourselves, deal with others, and always approach. It's thrown of mercy for a refill. Some of you feel empty. You don't feel like you want to show mercy to anyone. But every time I appear before the throne of grace, when i feel my mercy is depleted because where i sit people can mishandle you people can misunderstand people can deal with you without compassion but when i appear before his throne he refuses refuse your cup ask god to refill your cup refill my cup refill my cup The most gentle woman can become an animal when mercy is absent. Offense can deplete your cup of mercy. But let's feel it.
Bwana asifiwe sana. My name is Reverend Ruth Wamoyo on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter and on YouTube. All you need to do is just go to my page, like and follow me and to my YouTube channel I'm Ruth Wamoyo. Just go there and hit the red subscribe button. You will receive the latest music, the sermons, the gorgeous woman show divine encounter and all the services, even lunch hour services. God bless you as you do that.